<clears throat> Here's something really important that basically everybody, almost everybody, gets wrong on exposure. Say you want to do a rim light of someone's face, right? Isn't that wonderful? And I assume you know what rim lighting is, where actually only the speculars are visible. Everything falls off to shadow, or most everything falls off to shadow. Well, I'm going to turn on my camera, whether it be Nikon Fuji or otherwise. I'm going to dial in some exposure comp. Uh, let me see, whether you're using studio strobe, speed light, or just natural light. Oh, let's say three stops. So I'm going to shoot the face of Sarah. And the only thing I want lit is just this specular highlights as the light is coming through the window. Isn't that wonderful? Here's the problem with that, and this is also why it's so incredibly important to shoot RAW. This is not another video about RAW versus JPEG. By the way, if you don't know the difference between RAW versus JPEG, you should read one of 10 billion countless articles online. Maybe a billion. Photo sites, specular highlights. So nothing in the shot is going to get any light, and this is the mistake everybody makes. They're only seeing what it is that they want to present and uh, they expose for that. Okay, I'm just going to drop enough light on the specular highlights so all the shadows have no water, they have no saturation, they have no exposure because everything exposure is gain and time in SNR. Gain being aperture and time, of course, being shutter speed. SNR being single to noise ratio. So you've given some time and you've given some gain. To the shadows, there's basically almost nothing to pull out unless you shoot in RAW and drag your exposure slider over and you have sufficient dynamic range to make those black shadows come out to the point and then of course you have to really tweak the hell out of it and then you've got really poor saturation you got a lot of noise. Even if you got the best camera with big photo sites and uh, you're an expert in Photoshop or Lightroom, there's, uh, you, you, know, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear as the old saying goes, right? You, you can't get a diamond out of, a, out of a, a heap of poo. The issue that you have in only exposing for the speculars is that you've dropped just enough illumination to make the highlights raise above the shadows, and that's what you see. And when you click the review button on your camera, oh my god, that's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, here's where ETTR comes into play. ETTR, exposed to the right. What if I wanted to do a rim light shot of that same person and their face? Except I were to know that I wanted those specular highlights to come out contrasty, saturated, and fully detailed. What would I do? Exposed to the right, meaning you're actually pushing everything to the right, right to the point of oversaturation, including those specular highlights, not pushing them over the edge, but right to the edge. Oh, well, there's a problem there. Now I don't have a rimlet shut anymore. I've actually exposed my speculars, and this would be the specular, let's just say this is a specular photo site, right? This is a photo site on uh, Sarah's face, and it's not overexposed. Here we go, ETR. This is ETR, exposed to the right. This is a specular. Where the shadows fall, you don't give a damn. Yeah, but my shadows are exposed. I mean, my shadows could be three, four stops underneath my specular highlights, but it looks like a regular picture. It looks like a regular image. That's not what I wanted. Yeah, but here's what you don't get. By actually shooting the speculars like this, you can go into Lightroom or Photoshop or Affinity Photo or Capture One or whatever sort of raw editing software. This is why two things are really important. Shooting raw and shooting ETTR, exposed to the right. Exposed to the right merely means that you've saturated the sensor to the point where you're not clipping anything and you're getting the most orange juice out of the potential of your camera. Isn't that a pretty good analogy? I think it is. So now I have my speculars right here. What the problem is is that I wanted a rim light shot, a rim lit shot. Well, I've proper, properly lit her face, but all I have to do is drag my exposure slider wherever I want, and what's going to happen? I still have saturation and all the details and the, all the micro contrast and the specular highlights of her face. Now I still have that rim light shot, but instead of before, where I just had enough detail to give illumination to the specular for the rim lit shot. I now have all the detail, all the color, all the contrast. I don't have muddy. You know what happens when you underexpose? Everybody, I think everybody knows what happens when you underexpose. You end up with muddy, awful, unsaturated, poor contrast because there's too much noise there. Well, I just want to expose for the specular highlights. Well, that's good, but why don't you ETTR? Well, if I ETTR, then the shadows and everything, it just looks like a normal shot. Well, you, you don't get it. The, 
there's two ways that you should uh, correctly approach photography that you're not doing, and that is seeing what's not there. Not only when you have the camera in your hands, you're taking the shot, but also when you get back and do post-production with your raw files. This is why it's so important to both shoot raw and shoot ETTR, exposed to the right, in Lightroom or Photoshop, that you are able to do whatever the hell you want with the shadows, with your sliders, Raise them up to the point where nothing is left except for that thin sliver of light wherever it is you want it to fall because you properly lit for that. But you've exposed to the right, right to the point of saturation. Okay, this is any, any more that we've clipped the highlights, correct? You, you see this? This is so important. The difference between this shot and uh, underexposing by say two and a half, three stops, whatever it calls for, just merely to make the image come out on the back of your LCD to the point where, oh, God, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Everything is in the black except for the speculars. Right where I wanted to fall, this is it. Yeah, but what is lit has too much noise in it. It doesn't have enough contrast. It doesn't have enough saturation. Instead of doing that, even though that's what you wanted, you don't have enough detail there to make a really beautiful shot and get the full potential out of what is capable through your camera and capable through Lightroom or Capture One or Photoshop or whatever it is you want. People people don't see this. Like, well, I just want to do a highlight shot. Well, if you got shoot JPEG, I understand that, but and all of this really does come down to raw. The point is, is that you're not getting the most potential out of your camera and of your shot. And specifically, also additionally so, within that one shot, and this is what people really don't get about RAW. Within that one RAW shot where you've done ETTR, you have a hundred different images. What do you mean by a hundred different images? It means you not only have the potential for a rimlet shot only, you have the potential to make it look any other way that you want because you brought the maximum exposure to that without clipping any highlights so they can make it look one way, perfectly exposed, both shadows and highlights, or if you just want to make it look like a rimlet shot, that's fine. That's all capable in Lightroom, Capture One, Photoshop, Affinity Photo. I've been using Affinity Photo some. I'm not really that impressed with it. It's kind of fun, kind of simple, kind of like Photoshop Lite, but not really. Um, some of the stuff's counterintuitive. Anyway, I haven't installed, been messing with it some, but not much lately. ETTR and a raw file. You're not getting the saturation out of your shot. Someone's going to say, you just repeated yourself three times. Well, maybe I wouldn't have to repeat myself if people understand that point. I see the videos all the time like that. So, well, I just want to bring out the specular highlights. So, okay, we have uh, lit Sarah's face, for example. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, uh, yeah, I'm going to bring up my exposure comp. I'm going to drop it into the dirt. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, let's drop it down like three and a half stops. Okay, so now everything is black except for that the thin ribbon on her face, and that's exactly what I want. Yeah, but that thin ribbon that you dropped on her face is not this now. Let's just take this, which is full saturation on the speculars, and bring it down to... I think I've had too much water. Okay. That's about two and a half stops. I'm about to use the bathroom later. <laughs> now, now you've just lit the highlights. I dropped it down three and a half stops, whatever whatever it calls for, depending on your lighting. Now, nothing is lit. The whole entire shot is exactly what you want, except for the highlights. But now the highlights don't have enough contrast, don't have enough saturation, and don't have enough detail. The SNR, which is so critical to photography, digital photography, signal to the noise ratio, the SNR is bad. That means the potential of your specular highlights is up here. But you decided to expose for this. And you know what that means? All this stuff right here, to the point where you get to the water, is noise! 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 Noise in a digital photography is... <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it! Noise in digital photography is... Crap. Unless that's what you want, actually. Some people like noise. It's so gritty. It looks like film. High speed film. If that's what you want. You want your shots to look noisy? Go for it. Put on that uh, spandex jock strap and uh, stick your head out the window like a dog. Whatever it is you want, that's fine. 
<sighs> Generally speaking, however, noise sucks. It's no good. You don't want noise. Even if you wanted noise, even if a true professional never shoots for noise, what they'll do is they'll shoot it correctly and then they'll add the noise. <laughs> digital photography well we actually did that sometimes back in film but basically digital photography is the only time where you actually shoot it correctly and then you add the noise later you don't want to add the noise in the shot in the raw because you're detracting for the potential of that shot make it the best that it is and then take care of that in post one thing too additionally so that hardcore uh, professional photographers will do is they'll actually add noise they'll actually unsharpen the image um, there's there's so much that the, 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 the shot that you think is perfect still needs an enormous amount of work before it actually goes to print like for a cover for uh, a product shot there is no such thing as a perfect shot when it comes to hardcore professional corporate product commercial photography the very very best looking shot straight out of camera and I'm talking about raw or enormous tiff is still a piece of worthless crap relative to the final product we'll put so many masks and layers on that shot in Photoshop that it'll make your head spin that one single image will turn up to be nearly a gig or more because of so many layers and masks to make the final image and that is why raw is so important and that's why ETTR is so important you can make that shot look however you want don't underexpose it just to simply get the composition that you want because that's what you see on the back of your LCD screen when you hit the playback button that's just what I wanted yeah it is what you wanted but now the shot is limited in what you can do with it you should have fully exposed it and then taken care of that in post did I make myself clear? I think I made myself clear was that a decent enough analogy? I think I was simple enough. I don't know if I could have made it any more simple than that. ETTR. Exposed to the right. ETTR is not a complex principle at all. It is a cornerstone, a fundamental of, of photography. I don't know why people don't talk about ETTR. I think the last time someone asked me what ETTR was was maybe a year ago. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, click the link below. I'm going to warm my hands by this imaginary fireplace over here. And, uh, yep, and do some laundry. I'll lead an exciting life. <laughs>